like I mentioned previously that I screwed up. Let's do this right again. <laughs> oh, hopefully, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Anyway, just it just hit on me that this is like the 30th one actually. And I'm like, wow, I've been going for like 31 weeks by now. And like only like eight of them are me having a mental breakdown or breakdown. I don't know what's the difference. I went to therapy because of maybe, <laughs> but I, then that was really nice. Therapy is great. Anyway. <laughs> While in that period of month, February, and the beginning of the year, it's almost been a year anniversary since I started playing into Kingdom Hearts, like getting into the series. So March is a special month for me. Anyway, I've been playing through Kingdom Hearts 1 again. And it's better than my first playthrough, definitely, because I feel like Kingdom Hearts, okay, Kingdom Hearts 1, okay, this is gonna be about Kingdom Hearts, by the way. Kingdom Hearts 1 is really old. Like, it's older than me. Like, the original Japanese release date, it's older than me. And that for me is like, so getting into this game, it was really, really hard because I never grew up with the PS2, I grew up with the fucking Wii. And for the Wii for the longest time, so it's like... I'm, I'm young. I'm young, okay? So playing through games that are old is really hard for me because like it takes me a while to get into. But once I do, I get really into it and I'm, and I'm trying to remember what other game series I did that because I know it was an other game that I played and it was hard to get into because it was old, which one was that? I have no idea, I remember it was old anyway, but Kingdom Hearts was definitely one of those games. Because I remember the reason I bought Kingdom Hearts was with the Story So Far package. And that was because Final Fantasy XV really amazed me because amazed me because like I took a plunge because like I know absolutely nothing about Final Fantasy XV and other horror stories. Of rush development and all that stuff. And the same with Kingdom Hearts, like the messy plot and all that crap. And I thought Final Fantasy XV blew me away. Kingdom Hearts would probably do that. I was right. But that took me to Kingdom Hearts 3, and that's like a while there, so like... But Kingdom Hearts, sorry, so far, I tried playing the first game for like... I went up into Hollow Bastion on my first playthrough. And then I got really annoyed because the game was super duper hard. And it was a normal one, and then I realized I did not equip a lot of abilities, and I came like... After Atlantica, where I realized, oh yeah, you need to equip that, I completely forgot about it. And then I was so annoyed with Maleficent, like the, where, the first time you fight her, because like... I could not tell the HP part because I didn't know you had to have to put scan on it. That fucking annoyed me. But once I realized what the hell I was supposed to do, and then I'm like, I'm probably gonna restart the game, and I did, and I had a much better time, and I finished the game. And then my passion just grew after between the Kingdom Hearts 3, 5, 8 over 2, and then I played Kingdom Hearts 2, and then Birth by Sleep, and I was just like, I got into a massive fucking rabbit hole, which I'm glad I got into. And we played through Kingdom Hearts again, Final Mix to be more specific. I burp. Uh, also, I'm sick. <laughs> anyway, and I got into it. I was getting into it. I decided to go through proud mode. And oh uh, god, this game is like I don't know if it's hard because I'm just impatient. And then I realized I should because maybe because I'm probably I don't know if the game is not designed well. I don't know. I don't think so. It's designed really well, but sometimes it's just really annoying because the control can be quite clunky. And then it's like I'm not having fun at points. And then I'm like I managed to get into a Chernobyl. And then I sort of dropped it because like I cannot handle flying, gliding, I want to beat it, don't get me wrong, but then I'm like I'd rather play through Kingdom Hearts 2 again and I did that and I'm doing that at the moment. And I, then I just ended up watching the rest of the cutscenes for Kingdom Hearts 1 and I can safely say, yeah, but it still makes me cry when Kyrie and Sora hold hands and then Sora promise Kyrie they'll find each other again and, and then they let like, go and then symbol and clean blast through your ear. Still makes me fucking cry and the scene where Sora stabs himself with a no hard key play chest to help when you saw the cards, makes me realize why I love Sora so far, and it makes me cry so much. Anyway, but like gameplay can be really, really fun, but on Proud Mode, it can be really annoying because anything can one shot you, and it's like, oh, I'm having so much fun. And then I'm amazed people who can fucking play the game on level one with no scan because, like, the biggest annoyance for me is that I have no idea what the hell the enemy HP is. Like, like, that's why it was so hard in the beginning. And anyway, I guess we should start in the beginning where like, when you start out the game you get dive to the heart, the one with all the stainless class, all this stuff. I love that scene a lot. I love the music and everything about it. But I never understand the stainless glass one. One with, I think it was what's her name? I think it was Cinderella. Yeah, Cinderella, the one with the glass shoe. Her hair looks different. Like it has a different color. I don't understand that one. I thought they would fix it in the final mix version, but they did not. Anyway, that was just like a fucking side note. Anyway, the beginning part is cool because I love the music and it was the first time I'm hearing Yoko Shimomura's work 
outside of Final Fantasy 15, and hearing that was great. And then after you get to the real world, which is like the tutorial area of Destiny Island, the beginning part of Kingdom Hearts on the first playthrough was really annoying because I have no idea where I'm going, and the game literally just drops you into it. And it's like, <laughs> and it's so hard, but it really annoying because most of them, I love the music now, don't get me wrong, I can play the game and the music will not be annoying, but first time playing through it, it was definitely really, 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 really annoying because like the music loops after like one minute. And since you don't know what you're doing, since I didn't know what I was doing, maybe it's just a me issue. It gets annoying real fast because I'm like, where the hell am I supposed to go now? The area is so large. And I was Destiny Island and I love the theme now, don't get me wrong. But it's like, it took a while to warm up to, especially going through Final Fantasy 15 to Kingdom Hearts 1. Even though it was, really, it was released by the same company, even though I think it was called Square Soft at that time, I don't know. Also, Simple and Clean, the opening is fucking WAP. Can't forget, I forgot about that. And then you have the first fight, which is Darksider. You fight, you fight him a lot, I realized in the first game. You have the tutorial, and then Destiny Islands. And then again in the final boss, before Ansem, with his weird space demon. I'm gonna fucking focus on the boss later. Anyway, after Destiny Islands. You get Traverse Town. I love Traverse Town, but fucking in the beginning, had no idea what I was doing and I was lost half the fucking time. Like, how was I supposed to know I'm supposed to go back into the shop and get out and then get kicked my ass by someone named Leon, but his real name is Qual. I did not know that, so that was annoying. But afterwards, it was okay. I love the music now, but then I have my same issue with most of the soundtrack. It's really short. And then you have the rendition from Dream Drop Distance, Transverse, and Trance. That's an amazing song. But the first song is still really, 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 really good. Anyway, the first real Disney world you actually get through is Wonderland. And it's like, it's such a weird choice because I think, I don't know, how old is Wonderland? Uh, how old is Alice in Wonderland? I don't know. I never watched the movie, so everything was like, whoa. The only thing I know for sure is like the Alice, her voice from the original movie also came back into the game, which, which I think is really cool. Anyway, when I went through Wonderland, I loved the music. It was definitely like Wonderland. Aquaba and Monstro have my favorite music in the first game. They're really, really good, especially uh, Monstro, a very small switch, one of my favorite tracks in the game. But anyway, the thing with Wonderland, though, I think I don't know if the world was specifically designed to be like in small boxed off area because it feels like I'm going through inside a box, and and most of the world feels like that. But I think in Wonderland it works more because like it's Wonderland. It's supposed to be nonsensical and all that crap. And then you have this weird court scene where you have to fight cards and then the tower. I never really got that one and I'm like, I manage, but then I'm like, I'm confused. What the hell's going on? And then you beat the boss, which I think is called the Trick Master. And then I'm like, where the fuck am I supposed to go now? You're supposed to leave the area. But then like the game does not, like you close the key blade, you close the keyhole. You close the keyhole. And then I'm like, what the fuck am I supposed to do now? <laughs> it's like, the game just doesn't say stuff. And I, and I, I forget, does, does this game have a map feature? I know there's like a map in the corner. It does not have a map feature, I think. I fucking played through the game recently, how do I not remember? Anyway, I got lost, but I managed to beat it. And it was annoying. <laughs> and then you have Olympus Coliseum, you have the arena and all that crap. I'm not a really big fan of it, I don't think it's fun. And usually I just save it until the end, so like... Do it when you're over level. I love the music, obviously, but like, not much can be said. Then you have Deep Jungle, which I absolutely hate the music. I still do. I think it's like really annoying. Every time I hear the beginning flute thing, I'm like, yep, this is a fucking headache. But yeah, it's called Deep Jungle. It's like, and having a wild time in Holy Bananas again, I'm not a really big fan of. It's like, ugh. I don't think I watched Tarzan as well, so I did not know the plot at all. So it's like, huh. And then you have Acrobat, which is like, it was okay, but then I remember the weird sequence you had to get in the end after the fight when you after the uh, after the genie fight, uh, Jafar genie, what you call him, and you have to go through like the expl uh, crumbling area. Then you fly with the carpet. I don't understand that scene. I don't think you can even die. It's like it is weird. One time you're probably never gonna do. It. I don't think you can even redo that. It's only you have to, it's only during after the boss, and I'm like weird. And then you have this annoying ass centipede pop. But I guess we go with the bosses later. 
And then you have Monster, which is not a, technically a real world, but then I'm like, I love a very small swish. It's a really, really, really good track. And then you have Monstro, Mon Monster, Monstro, Monstrous, Monstrous, Monstro. I love that track as well. <laughs> it's really good. And then the story with Luriku and all that crap is also really good. Oh yeah, this is just me saying really, really good stuff about Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> And then you have Atlantica, which is a massive no for me. <laughs> but then, and then you have a Halloween Town, which is really, really short. I realize, but I do like the final, the boss for that area where you have to fight Oogie Boogie Manor. Like apparently, I don't think it was in the movie. It's like an original concept, and I really like that. It's like, ooh, it's taking liberties. I like it when the game does that. And then you have Neverland again. I love the music for Neverland of uh, uh, Captain Hook's pirate ship or pirate gee gauge gee. I don't know how you pronounce it. I really love that track. And then you realize, and the thing is, that we uh, 1.5 remakes also reorchestrated the soundtrack. So when I was playing through Melody of Memories, I was so annoyed because I'm like, why did you use the PS2 MIDI version? What the fuck? And that whole scene where Sora flies for the first time, and then he's like, oh, I can't wait to tell Kyrie. I'm like, oh my god, you're pure, you're pure cinnamon bun. Oh my god. I then you have the Winnie the World, but Winnie the Pooh world, and I have a soft spot for Winnie the Pooh because I remember my mom used to read me bedtime stories about Winnie the Pooh. So when I think of it, I think of like, oh, the symbol is time. Anyway, after all the Disney, where you get to the original stuff, and then you have Hollow Bastion, and wow, Hollow Bastion is like amazing. And actually, about this game is so, maybe because Tsuya Nomura is a fucking artist as well. The, all the games, in my opinion, are aesthetically pleasing to look at. A lot of the combat, a lot of the moves, they are so well animated. Even for like 2002 standard, it was really impressive. And like character design as well. And I do think the game holds up. Uh, the only thing that the issue is like some of the models being off, but like, uh, you get it from the PS2 era. But then some moves just like are really gorgeous to look at. like. Art Arcane, I don't know, some of them, I don't know most of the moves name on top of my head. But some of them just like have this cool crystal effect and I'm like, oh yeah, this pleases me. <laughs> then you have this one weird room in Wall of Bastion in the middle room with all the elevators. Where you look up and then you have this gorgeous stainless steel thing. I only realized that when I was fucking watching a speed run of the game, like the game's done quick marathon thing for charity and all that stuff. It's like, hey, look at that and I'm like, what the fuck? And then you have the end of the world again. It's such a unique and scary area in the game. And I'm like, what the fuck? And then I realized the gummy ship. I don't know. People seem to hate Kingdom Hearts One gummy ship, but I personally love them because like they're stupidly fun. I like space shooters, and I never got an over that. I love the music blast away. There's like three different rendition of it. Love all of them. And then yeah, that's all the fucking worlds. And like. It's like my real issue with Kingdom Hearts One is that it's an old game. Like I don't think it, I don't think it aged bad, but I think it aged pretty really well. But then I get annoyed by some of the crap. <laughs> well, while I wasn't a really big fan of the gameplay because of its age, I do think some of the bosses can be really really fun. So I'm gonna go through them all one by one. Anyway, for the first world, Destiny Islands, I guess it's like the tutorial boss again, which is Dark Side. It does its job okay. But on problem mode, it's kind of annoying because you can shot, one shot you with the lasers, and that's annoying. So anyway, the real first boss of the game in Traverse Town. Is Leon technically a fight? I don't know, because I know you can lose it and there's no real penalty, but if you win, you get the fucking uh, max potion, I think. High potion, I don't know. Anyway, the real fight is the guard armor. And it's weird. Because in Final Mix, they recolor everything, because like... I don't know, I think the recall looks better than the original version, but I don't know. So like, what, what, so when I was playing through Reaching of Memory and I saw God Armor, and I'm like, what's wrong with your skin, dude? And then you defeat it, then you technically don't defeat it because then, then you fight the opposite armor, which I really like the design, how it's like, you can twist it around and then you get a different design, and then you got a cannon, and I'm like, that's so cool. And like, it was hard, it was definitely annoying because like, I did not have scan and I have no idea how much I do it. But once I beat him on Proud Mode, I was really, really happy. I was getting physically annoyed. And then my parents and my sister are like, yo, if you're not having fun, why are you playing? And I'm like, I want to prove something. <laughs> and then you have in Wonderland, which I think there's two fights. You have the weird one with the fucking tower. I never really got the point of that. But anyway, you got the Trick Master. And again, I love the design, but I do find it annoying how it's only one weak point. But other than that, it was fun, I think. Anyway, Shouting Dark Clouds is also a good fight theme. I don't know, it's not out of the blue, but still. 
Anyway, Trickmaster was okay, not impressive, but like, I didn't die as much as I did with guard armor. And then we have Deep Jungle, which I think is the first time you actually fight a Disney boss, which is the fucking... Tiger? I don't know if it has a name. Scar or Saber? I think it's Saber. I, f I hate the design. I don't hate the design. I hate the model because it has the unblinking eyes. I don't know if it's in the movies or something, but it's like... Your eyes look dry, man. Moist them. Anyway, and you have Clayton with Stel St Stealth Sneak. Stealth Sneak. I like the combination. You fight Clayton first, and then you're like, ah, you have a fucking Heartless. I do like Stealth Sneak, sneak design, though. I mean, the recolor version, obviously. The original version looks... Blech. Like, green and yellow do not go well together. I don't care what anyone says. It was definitely challenging, but not, like, annoying as in fucking guard armor. And then we have Ak Agrabah, which fight... Oh god, I hated the centipede team in uh, 70 pot demon when I first played through the game. It's just like, oh my god, can you not? It was so annoying. And then you have Jasmine voice going like, help me, help me. And I'm like, I'd rather not. I read this my first playthrough, but then I realized the fucking Sonic Blade is fucking broken as hell. Like, holy crap. I had such a hard time in normal mode. So one day you just used Sonic Blade on proud mode, everything like, oh, hey, that went by fast. Like, holy crap, fast. And then you have Cave of Wonders, which I still don't understand what was the point of that. It was like, it was an okay fight. It was kind of annoying because you can only hit its eye. But that was just me. And then the real fight, and then you have the Jafar and Genie fight. Seeing, honestly, the fact that Genie is voiced by the same guy who does Homer, System, Homer Simpson is like, whoa, I can never unhear his voice now. But anyway, that fight was okay, but then it gets annoying because like, I don't feel like I do enough damage and I'm like doing cheap damage. So I was like, oh, I'm a professional. Then you have the real fight, which is Jin and Jafar. Then it's like, it's another, it's a gimmick fight because you need to defeat the lamb Iago has. So that's like... Yeah, I'm having so much fun, but like, it wasn't hard, it was kind of tedious, which is like my issue with most of the game's bosses, which I did have fun with some of them, like, I weirdly had a fun time with the Parasite Kate, I don't know why. <laughs> Maybe it's a design that I like, for other reasons, but I'm not getting into that one. It's the same reason why I like Embryos, and I'll leave it at that. But then it's like, you did it, and then we have Monstro, but again, it's like Parasite Kate, it was fun. You fight it twice, but Monster is like a really small world. It's technically not a world, it's like a sort of a side thing if I think about it, but like... I had fun. And then you have Atlantica, which is like my least favorite world in the game because of the controls. It's like... It's not... It's not hard, but it's just annoying. And the fight itself, like you fight... Like Ursula gave me such a pain in the ass in the first game, but like, you also have the shark. Which is just named the shark. That's amazing. It was okay. But then you have Ursula, which is like, I hate it because like it was a gimmick play because like, the game mentions you and I completely forgot. I was like, oh, you need to use the cauldron and throw some pale spells in. And I'm like, I'm not going to fucking read that. And then I, <laughs> I read it and then I forgot about it. So I had a fucking bitch ass time on my first playthrough. The second playthrough I did better because like, oh, hey, if I shove Electra's down Sora's throat, everything just works better somehow. Which is true. And then you have the giant Ursula fight where I'm like, I'm not gonna touch this until I'm over level. And I did over level and it was so much better. It's not it's not hard, it's just annoying because you get an instant you get you die easily in proud mode, okay? Thank god there's no critical mode. And then you have Halloween Town, which I don't in the first game, I don't think you had a boss. I know in the second game you had the fucking weird experiment thing but i don't think the first game yeah it was disney bosses again which is oogie boogie oh yeah i have lock shock and barrel and then oogie boogie like i hated oogie boogie because like it was annoying gambling thing like chances and all this stuff it wasn't hard it's like, like you go so far in and then you get one shot and i'm like i'm having so much fun <laughs> and the thing with the giant so i decided i'm not gonna do this in my level i just grinded a bit and then i did it again and with Lock, Shock, and Barrel, I'm like, I'm just gonna fucking use Sonic Blade, and guess what? It worked. But Oogie Banner, I had fun because it was such a uniquely designed boss where you had to defeat like certain points. I had fun with that one. And then you have Neverland, which technically is a Neverland. You just stay in the pirate ship. I mean, early development, you you get out of Neverland, but who knows? Anyway, you have Shadow Zora or Anti Zora. I don't know which one is which. But like, it was hard. 
and it was annoyingly hard. I grinded till I can beat him with Sonic Blade, which is true. I fucking love Sonic Blade in this game. <laughs> Never used much in my first playthrough was second play uh, second playthrough, I'm proud. Yep, it's fucking good. You and then you fight Captain Hook, which to my shocking, it wasn't that hard actually, it was actually kind of easy. I was expecting to have a hard ass time, but I didn't. But then you have Phantom, I completely forgot about Kurt C's. I love their design, they're optional bosses for the game, and I'm like, they're cool. Didn't fight them because I don't want to, and I'll get annoyed with them, so I haven't touched them yet. I still haven't finished the first game, by the way, I just skipped the Chernobyl fight because I could not <laughs> do flying bosses anymore. And that's all the way, now you have Olympus Colosseum where you, I think, do you have fight like, Hades in the first game? I think you do. But I'm not really a big fan of it, you have Sephiroth as well, obviously, but I haven't touched Sephiroth at all in any of the games because, like, I don't want to. I know you fight Cloud. Cloud was kind of hard. Yeah, anyway, you go to Hall of Bastion, there's like a lot of- I don't think- is there a lot of like- what's the first boss for the game? Um, let me think about it. I know you'll fight Eric Ransom. You know, you fight Riku for the first time. His name is Soul Eater, I have no idea. Anyway, you fight him. He's kind of hard. But with Sonic Blade, you can fucking destroy him. So you do that. And then you do the Maleficent fight, which in my first play was absolute pain in the ass, and the second place on Primal, which is even the same pain in the ass, but then I'm like, I don't know what to do, and then I fucking grinded for like five levels, and then I kicked her ass. And then you do the Dragon Maleficent, which is fucking hard and annoying, but then I'm like, I got Tingle Bell is stupidly broken in this game. So you use Tingle Bell, and then everything goes well. Go well. And then you fight Riku for a second time, and then you, I think it's the first time you hear Froza da Mel. Froza da Mel. Froza da Mel? Fro, fro, Froza da Mel. I'm not Italian, okay? <laughs> Which is a great track, mind you, and it was a fun fucking fight. I did not have to grind for it. It's a really well designed fight. I don't think it was as hard as people make it out to be, but like, it's like, it's weird. I had a hard time with fucking the pot centipede in like, the fight first place here, but Riku Keyblade form? Fucking piss easy. I don't know how I did that. So that was all the best, and also the scene with Kai, uh, the. Symbol and cream rendition of like I think, I think it's just called Hikari Kingdom Hearts Orchestration or something like it's a sort version of the song. It's really good Anyway, then you have Hollow Bastion. I mean the end of the world where you fight channel like I mentioned this in the first podcast I did I think it's like me talking about this games as a whole like the entirety of the series I thought Chernobog was an original design thing. I did not know it was in Fantasia So I'm like, oh hey, what the fuck is a Fantasia? But like, again, I've, it's like the same thing as I have with the giant Ursula fight, it's just annoying. It's like, I don't not like flying. And the fact that the final boss was World of Chaos and it was like, oh god, I hate flying. It's not bad, but Kingdom Hearts 3 nails flying. Anyway, you have Ansem, the Secret of Darkness, which is like, why the fuck is the final boss such a hot piece of ass? Explain to me. Explain to me. Like, when I first saw Ansem, very first time, by the way, I'm like, I kind of want to get boned by him, really. That's like my first fucking thought, especially his voice. I'm so. It's weird playing the first game because in the first game he's voiced by Bill. What's his name again? Uh... Billy Zane, I think, for. K yeah, for the first game. It's the only time he did that, and afterwards it was done by Richard Asgard. Epscar. I'm so used to Richard Epscar voice because like he did the longest. So hearing Billy Zane again is like. Huh, this is weird. They're both great, mind you. I want, I don't want to get. He's like, anyway, but that's some. Ansem. Call me. Anyway, after Ansem, you fight Darksider again, and then you fight Ansem again by yourself. I think it's weird. Like, you fight Ansem with Donald and Goofy, and then you fight Darksider by yourself, and then you fight Ansem again by yourself, I think. Also, you have the Behemoth and Arc Behemoth, but I don't really call them a boss because they're not that hard, actually. They're really easy. <laughs> And then you have the World of Chaos, which I'm like, why the fuck is there a giant penis ship? It's it's, it's such a... Not really designed, it was like... I'm kind of grossed out by this, not gonna lie, it's intense. And then you have fucking Anthem being shortlist, shirtless over there, and I'm like... Can't complain much, but then I'm like, what's up with its face? Why does it, why does this ship has a face? 
It's weird as I don't think the game even fucking mentions like this is how it looks like. It's horrific. I still like the design and then you have the Guardian and stuff. I like the design and then you realize oh it's fucking Terra. That makes me sad a lot. <laughs> anyway, for first it's still pretty solid, don't get me wrong. I still like the game, but like some part I'm just like no. <laughs> Like, out of all the Kingdom Hearts game other than Reaching a Memory, I do want to play Reaching a Memory, don't get me wrong, but, like, I'm saving it for a while. And it's not like I have fucking free time anymore. Anyway, anyway, I still like Kingdom Hearts 1. I'm glad I replayed through the game, even though I gave up my channel bug inside of Kingdom Hearts 2, but that's not the point here. Kingdom Hearts on Prime Mode is hard. I'll leave it at that. The music, the game in general, I love the story as well. It's just, it's just really fun. I'm glad I played through this and then you have all the other games as well, which I want to slowly get over to because like, hey, March is a special month for me for this series. I don't know, when the hell was, when, when, when was this, when is this game anniversary, by the way? I wonder if they're ever going to make a remake of the first game. I think they'll do. But in scale, once they do that, Nomura's going to add more plot details. And I was just going to be, hmm, I'm so happy. 